Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Bear Glacier off in the distance. Bear Glacier. It's the largest of the 22 named glaciers that come off of the high ice field. It's close to north corner of Kenai Grove National Park. So, it's about March time. And what we're going to do is we're going to get inside comfortably seated. Two, three, three whales. So this would be a mom, a calf, and what they call an escort.
Right? Nice. Get you ready. Here's the tail. Just missed it.
All this ice that you see floating here has names. The small stuff's called brash ice. Bergy bits. Oh, look at big calving. Boom. Oh, there it goes again. I guess we got here just in time. that we're passing here. It's called the birdie bit. And remember, nine-tenths of that is underwater. seems to gather at the bow and the whole upper back deck is maybe four feet long. So if you want to spread out the little central distancing, what I'll try to do is I'll try to keep the boat sideways to the glacier and about every 10 minutes or so I'll spin it around the other way. It's a story that started about 400 years ago from this ice that you're seeing right here. The scientists call this the hydrologic cycle. It actually starts out as a snowflake on the Harding ice field and they get about 60 feet of the stuff annually. That's feet, not inches. What doesn't melt in the course of the summertime goes through a process where it turns into an ice crystal. Year after year, those successive snows pile on top, creating more weight until finally it gets so heavy, it starts flowing downhill, carving these beautiful fjords. So like I said, this ice that you see thundering down into the water has been on that journey for 400 years. And when it crashes into the water, it's the fastest it will ever move. It's kind of like a last hurrah for the job well done for building these beautiful fjords. But that ice won't last long. Sooner or later, it'll melt, evaporate, 
buoyed up and they come back as snow and that completes that cycle. Now another thing you might notice, and we're often asked the question, how come that ice looks so blue? It's actually an optical illusion because as the sunlight enters that ice, it's refracted over and over again by the tiny air bubbles in the ice until only the strongest end of the visible light spectrum, the blue end, reflects back out. Another thing you might be feeling is that wind. It's a local weather phenomenon called catabatic winds. Because as the cold air rushes across the top of this ice, it's refrigerated, but when it gets to the water, which is warmer, that air rises and that pulls more of that cold air down.
excuse me. Just look at some harbor seals that are out on the ice. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, a huge piece off the bottom. You see that? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. By the way, back to the harbor seals. Come up here, this is where they have their pups. Easy to get out of the water. They have this thing called undulation where it looks like a wiggling sausage. So they can climb rocks very well, but get away from predation from orca. Oh man, this one's going off today.
video will never show the depth of this whole event. You can tell the difference between males and females. The females have shorter fins. There's the male coming up again, right at 12.30. Females have that smaller cyclical shape, dorsal fin. Males, like the one just, just coming up, they have that straight dorsal fin. Now there are three different types of water. resident orca, those are the fish eaters. That's what these are, the AK2 group. Now they do have their traveling family groups called pods and they do have names. They are extensively studied. also have transient orca. See, you can see that little saddle patch behind them. That's how you identify the individuals. The transient orca, those are meat eaters. They're quiet, they're stealthy. These are a little bit more what we call boat friendly. They spend a lot of surface time. They're easier to view. There's some off in the distance at 11.30, and then the big male is right next to us. These animals can weigh up to 18,000 pounds, be anywhere from 22 to 32 feet long. I see three of them up ahead off in the distance. And then I believe there's a male up ahead of us too. Yes. Sometimes the young males are called sprouters. Very, very intelligent animals.
beautiful. talk with the children later on about the birds and the bees. <laughs> two and then Thank <laughs> you. 
think he's the bigger one. So, I mean, I have no qualifications to say this, but it's possible that, that male is trying to get in on that male's party. Maybe. Those guys are going to have a good view too. It's getting closer. Kind of off the pass. getting closer. I haven't seen that first male yet.
see him under the water. They're under the bow. Yeah. You want to set yourself up on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> 